Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. This is Chris and I'm here to do hashtag Tarot5Ws, which was started by um, the lovely Brian Cormac Carr. He very kindly tagged me to do this response, so I'm responding to that tag, so thanks Brian. I will start off, well let's just, let's just go for it. Um, so the five Ws, who, what, why, where, when, not necessarily in that order. Um, so the first one is who, and you know my understanding is that this is all about the individuals, the people that have influenced our tarot journey. So there's some kind of a sub questions. Um, who first turned you on to tarot? That would have been my mum. Um, it was my mum that bought me my first deck. It was through hearing my mum talking about tarot readings that she's got. She had got. Uh, she used to work in a pub, and they would have tarot nights and stuff, and. Uh, she would come home and talk about the readings that she'd got, and I always found it really interesting. Um, so that was kind of a, what sparked my interest in it. Uh, who's your favourite tarot author? Um, Rachel Pollock. No, hands down, it's not even, you know, up for debate. Rachel Pollock, 100%. Um, and that kind of uh, ties in with one of the later questions as well. Who's your favourite deck creator? Um, so kind of a struggle with this one a wee bit to be honest with you. Um, my favourite deck itself is um, the Lightseers um, but I was trying to pick a creator who's you know creator whose decks are like all of them Anna Turian was the first one that came to mind um, I just love Anna Turian's particular style of art um, I think she's a beautiful artist Um and yeah, uh, any deck that she does, I think is stunning. Um, Malamy and Logan is another um, another deck creator. Um, Malamy are um, creatrix of Chakra Heal and Tarot and Cat Aura Tarot. Her decks are beautiful. Um, both have been uh, illustrated by Ella Mazur. Dog, dogs running about, creating havoc in the background. Um, yeah, both uh, illustrated by Ella Mazur, um, both absolutely stunning pieces of work, and it was the Chakra Hill and Tarot that first um, kind of a, a, a glitter on me there. Um, it, that was my um, intro into the chakras. It's not something that I had ever looked at before, but now it's something that, you know, it doesn't just influence my tarot practice. Um, you know, like it, it, does, it really does influence my tarot practice because you know the colours um, are linked to the chakras, and I feel that that really enhances my readings. But also, um, like meditations and things that I do, um, I kind of a focus on the chakras and stuff for that. So that's had a big impact on me, and for that reason, Malamira has been a you know has been has had a big influence on my practice in general, and is one of my favourite creators. Um, Rosario Salerno would be another person that I would um, mention who's, you know, I just love his artwork, I love everything that he does. Who's your favourite tarot character? So the actual characters in the deck, um, there was obviously quite a lot to choose from, but there was two main ones that came to mind. Um, the Empress, I have to pick the Empress. The Empress is that kind of a nurturing energy, um, that... that motherly energy if you want to call it that 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 kind of a nurturing encouraging building you up type energy that's an energy that i really kind of a um thrive on um and that's something that i always try to um embody and provide to the people around about me whether that's in the work that i do on here with tarot or whether that's in my kind of a day job or whatever i always try to you know be on the side of kindness. Do you know what I mean? I would, I would kind of a, rather be a, um, I would rather be the positive influence that that encourages and builds up builds up someone's confidence than, you know. So sometimes we need to, you know, we need to hear the kind of a no nonsense. Um, this is that 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 you know this is that and whether you like it or not type thing. Um, but I feel that I'm better at being that nurturing force and I. I just I'm, I feel better being in that role so definitely the Empress is one of my favourite characters the Hanged Man as well um, just because he embodies that kind of a taking a bit of a 
you know, go into an altered place um, and trying to like quiet your mind, gain new insight, that type of thing, which is really one of the reasons, one of the big reasons that I come to Tarot anyway, um, is to try and be in that kind of an altered state of mind, it's to get that different perspective. So the hangman's a big one as well. And the next one is what? So this is like objects that influence you. Um, or is it? So the first question is, what do you most love about tarot? Um, I suppose the thing that I most love is that it lets me have an objective conversation with myself. Um, it, you know, I, there's no one else in the room, but when I'm laying down the cards, it's kind of like I'm I'm having that. Con I'm, I feel like I'm having a conversation with someone, even though it's all coming from me. And because I'm interpreting cards and I'm not, you know, necessarily thinking and giving my opinion it feels like I'm able to have an objective conversation with a part of myself, if that makes sense. What's your currently most used deck? Um, so this was actually quite a difficult one for me because the way I use decks is I'll be quite random and sporadic and I use quite a lot of decks, maybe like just day and day. Day on day, I'll, I'll just pick a different deck to use. I'll just see what takes my fancy. And, you know, sometimes I'll go for the same deck, maybe a few days in a row, maybe for a week or so. Um, but right now, I am I'm I feel that I'm just, you know, here, there and everywhere. Um, so my answers to this question, let me um, put the table on. First one uh, I'll mention is Rachel Pollock's Shining Tribe Tarot. And the reason I mention this is because I'm actually in a study group just now that's um that, that that's studying this deck, um so I'm using it a lot, maybe well yeah for readings as well because we're studying it through reading with it so using it for readings um but also I'm I'm kind of a studying with it, um so definitely this is one of the kind of a main ones on my desk at the moment, um. Other than that, I've just had to go with my kind of a standard old faithfuls, my standard fallbacks. Um, so they are the um, Light Seers uh, by Chris Ann. Amazing deck. I would, you know, I would call this my soul deck. This is the deck that I feel closest to. I can always get something out of it. It's a, you know, I don't even have to think. Um, and they, they, I find the images really stunning and amazing and i just love this deck um so naturally as the one that in general terms i would use the most if i was doing a reading for someone else i'm more like more than likely going to pick this deck and the rws as well and one of its many forms i've got loads of um smith weight decks but um and some some kind of rws is always kind of a so i use this as a deck that you can see that there's reversals shuffled in um i use it for like timing uh and yeah i you know i've got decks lo loads of decks up there that i use it's more often than not always an rws to hand <laughs> um so yeah those are the um the decks that are most used at the moment. Let me turn this light off because I'm peeling off as it is. Um, what's your current? Sorry, what is your favourite tarot tool or technique? Um, my tarot practice is quite simple. I don't really use tools that much. I might um light a bit of incense. Um, if I feel like it, I might light a candle. Um, I might even get a wee crystal out or something and put it on the desk, but by and large, I don't really feel like I need um that many tools. I don't feel that they're that crucial to my practice. Um, so what um, to talk about my favorite um my favorite kind of a things, my favorite techniques, my shuffles. Um, you all know that I like to do like my riffle shuffles and my overhands. Um, I'll just get the table back on. Um, so my riffle shuffle, and then my overhand. Um, so if there's if a deck is in order, I like to do seven riffle shuffles. I feel as though that randomizes it nicely. Um, if not, then usually one riffle shuffle and four overhands, kind of a is enough for me to feel like the decks reset and it's you know it's in a good 
place for me to answer the next question if that makes sense and the only other thing i was going to mention is um i like to use the elements and particularly I, I like to use them in spreads i love a good elemental spread um i love uh kelly the truth and story has a, a nine card spread it's shaped like a diamond and the, the the four elements are there um there's a spread that's in the witch's wisdom tarot handbook called the i think it's the Ro compass rose compass and rose or rose compass or something uh tarot spread that's got um positions for the elements um and then the, sometimes i'll just do like a four card one for each element um spread what i love so much about elemental spreads is the elements are very dynamic um so i could read for one person who wants to look at their you know their their i don't know their, their spiritual development or something like that and the elements might mean one thing for that type of question then i might read for someone who's you know very much looking for the fortune teller experience and is looking to have their future told um and the elements can they can be appropriate for that as well you know they, they can not morph but they they can adapt they're very adaptable they can adapt to suit different questions so i do love a good elemental spread just because i find them very adaptable um the next uh, kind of a section of questions is when um so when did you first encounter tarot um this would be when i was probably about eight um you know i talked about how my mum would come home and talk about readings that she'd got um the first time i got a deck was um i got taken to waterstones in town and and bought my first tarot deck so that was i suppose when i first encountered it physically um when did you first start to take it seriously so <laughs> i was i was quite a serious child so um i always kind of took it seriously to be fair um but i suppose the the first time i had the um it's maybe in the last like five years or so that i started to have the connection that i have with it now if that makes sense that like the current kind of a um, relationship that i have with the cards and um, that's kind of a developed mainly over the last five years i would probably say um so maybe um more seriously in that regard um over that time um when did you last have a significant tarot experience um probably a few months back i did a spread um a career reading for myself um and it really kind of anticipated that a change was needed uh and that was followed up by a major major shift in my career path um so that was really significant and quite a powerful reading for me uh and that was probably the last time that it, it's had that impact you know um the next section is where um so where 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 were you <laughs> when you uh, did your first reading first serious reading um probably at the kitchen table in the house that i grew up in but i'll be honest i don't remember my first serious reading i do remember the first time that i ever pulled cards and that was when we got home after we went out and bought that deck we got home uh and i quickly um i don't know i think i gave them like a quick shuffle and i pulled two cards and it was like the hanged man and the death cards and i remember telling my mum being like oh no and she gave me into trouble for not do, not reading the book and doing it properly um but obviously that wasn't a serious reading um but yeah i i, I don't really remember the first serious one but it was probably you know for my mum or one of her friends at that kitchen table um where do you carry out readings and tarot practices now so where you see me at this desk um the desk that you're you're seeing when i when i do the, the table camera um this is where i normally read cards sometimes i'll take a deck into the room and do it on my bed or sometimes i'll take them downstairs and do them on the coffee table and whatnot but for the most part here 
Um, and where do you store your cards? So on the shelves, you can see them all behind me. Um, on the shelves, in their boxes that they come in. Um, so if I don't have a box, then uh, I might put them in like a bag or, you know, something like that. Um, but for the most part, in their boxes on the shelf. Um, and then that just leaves why I think. Uh, so why why do you love tarot? So I, for many many reasons, I guess I, I love that it's mysterious. Um, and it's a bit weird, you know. I love I love weird. Uh, I love that it's a tactile experience, you know. It's I can I, I can hold I hold the cards and I can feel them in my hands and I can like uh, work them when I'm shuffling them and you know laying them out and stuff like that. Um. Yeah, I just I, I I just really enjoy the actual physical experience of it. Um, I, I love that it has a unique purpose for me, so it does something for me that nothing else really does. Um, and another thing is I love that it's connected me to Starro community. Um, and I've made a lot of good friends purely through um our mutual love of the cards. Um, so that that's definitely something to mention. Why do you continue to study it? I, it's a to me for me is I'm always going to be studying it. It's always going to be a learning experience. Um, I don't think there's ever going to come a point where I'm that'll be me. I'll, I'll have learned the tarot, you know. And to be honest, I'm glad about that because I think if that was the case, I would probably get bored with it really fast. It would feel like a video game that I'd completed, you know. And I, I don't keep playing video games when I've completed them. I, I'm very quick to move on to the next thing um so I, yeah that i suppose I, I continue studying tarot because that's to me that that's that, you know that's what you do that's what i do that that's what i love about it um why do you think tarot is important and or helpful so i kind of touched on this earlier it, it can fulfill a wide variety of roles depending on what the querent is is looking for. All right, so some of it, there's loads of different reasons why people come to get their cards read. It may be for a bit of fun, um, it, taboo, <laughs> you know, it, it's a bit taboo for lots of people, and you know, for some people that that's what brings them to your table. That's what they enjoy about it. Um, some people are looking for like insight and advice, um, honesty, you know. Uh, that I, get, I talked about it earlier, that objective view, um, that unbiased view. Um, so I think it's important. I think it's helpful because it, it can fulfil a wide variety of roles and it adapts itself to whatever that particular person needs. I think. Um, so yeah, I don't think I've missed off anything. So I think that's my five W. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you again to Brian um, for for tagging me to do this. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you later. Bye.